Hi everyone, this video is part two in a two-part series about how to create a custom theme for your ServiceNow instance. So if you haven't already checked out part one, please do so. In that video, we look at how to create a custom theme using custom colors that you select and replace the default theme in your ServiceNow instance. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can create variants for your themes. In other words, to give your users the opportunity to select the theme that they want to use in their instance. So let's get started. Okay, so in the previous video, we learned how to create your own custom theme to go from the standard Polaris theme that is shipped with the San Diego release of ServiceNow to our own custom theme. And this is the one that we created in the previous video. We have a look at the list of themes here. Uh, the one that we created was this one here called Rock On. Uh, the name was adopted from actually the name of the color scheme that I got from the Adobe Color Wheel. Someone had actually created this color scheme already kind of for us. So this is what we've got here. And we saw that it was actually a, a theme uh, that used a or referenced a style also called Rock On, which actually contains the colors that we're going to be using uh, for this theme. We also saw here that the type of this theme was a core theme, which basically means it's the, the default theme that we're going to be using. So in this video, we're going to look at how to create variants to give users the option to select what they want. So if you followed along the first video, okay, this step here is real easy to do. The first thing that we need to do is to actually to create a new theme. So let me come back here and go ahead and create a new theme. I'm just gonna give this a very generic name, Theme Collection 2, only because I've already got a Theme Collection 1 and a description contains some themes. Okay, <laughs> and we'll save that. Our themes, both our core themes and our variants. So the variants will be the themes that users will be able to select from when they go to their user preferences. So at the moment, if I come to my user preferences here, uh, we'll see there's no opportunity to select a theme. Okay, but we'll enable that. But before we do enable that, uh, we're going to create our own theme collection of themes that users can then select from. So before I get started here, I'm gonna go back to my style. So the easiest way to do that, there is no, I don't believe there's a module to link to the table. So I'm just gonna open up my themes and my rock on theme once more, and then go to my rock on style. <laughs> and we saw in the last video, we could generate uh, this color palette from an external website uh, called Color Generator. This is actually a, a ServiceNow managed website. It's been specifically built to create themes for your ServiceNow instances. And this is the, the theme or the color palette that I use for my theme. So I just went to copy JSON here and then I pasted that into the style here. So at the moment though, this style is classified as a core style. So what we need to do is basically duplicate this and classify it as a variant instead. And then we can include it in our theme collection. So I'm just going to actually change this to variant and then do an insert. Okay, so now I've got actually two rock on styles, one core and one variant. So the core is attached to this theme here, but the variant I want to include in my new theme collection too. So let's go back now to my theme collection too. And now we can start adding rows here. So uh, the first one I'm going to add are the two ones that you should always add, I believe, uh, which are the UI 16 dashboard visualization compatibility theme. <laughs> Just select that. Sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly to select. Uh, so that's gonna be part of our core. And I will add another entry here for our fonts. So we select the typography style there that's already built in. So that actually won't be changing. All we're concerned about is the colors in our theme. That will also be a core and then what I'm going to do here is select the standard 
Polaris style uh, that ServiceNow provides. So that's actually going to be our default theme in our theme collection here. So I'll select Polaris and that will be the core. Now everything else that I add here will be classified as a variant. So I've actually got uh, the theme that we added before, which was the rock on. Uh, now we've got uh, two styles here. One is a variant and one is a core. Uh, which one is which? I don't know. Let's see. Let's select the second one, assuming that that was the one we wanted. <laughs> Okay, and I've actually got a few other themes uh, as well, or a few other styles that I can use that I created uh, earlier. So I'll just maybe put in another couple here. Um, one was called Ocean. Uh, yes, Ocean. Hello. Select it. Yep, that will be another variant. And I'll add one more. Uh, which was called Dunescapes. That's right. So let me add Dunescapes in there. <laughs> okay, yes. And that will also be another variant there. Before we go any further, I will just save this right now. I'll show you how, how you can actually create your own dark theme and add it here as well. So if we go back to our color generator, this is the one that I used before to create my uh, rock on theme. Uh, you see here, there's a, a switch here uh, to go to dark. So if you just click there, it will adjust the entire color, pa color palette there to uh, match a dark theme. So instead of showing a, a white background on your forms and lists, it will be black and all the colors will be adjusted accordingly. So that's all you have to do. And then go to copy JSON again, and then add that to a new style in your instance. So let me go ahead quickly and do that. Uh, I will just go to my table. Sorry, sys UX style list. And so we've got all our styles there. So I'm just going to create a new one and call this Rock on Dark. <laughs> and this will also be a variant theme. And again, we have to put in the curly braces here and type in properties in quotation marks followed by a colon. And then I will just put in my ending brace there and then just paste in what I've just copied right there for my dark theme and then save that and then go back to my theme collection and then add that as my last variant. I've actually got quite a few here so this is going to give our users lots of choices so uh, rock on dark that's the one select it that's what i want yep thank you <laughs> and we'll select that as a variant as well and i will save that okay so now we're nearly good to go all we need to do now is to change a couple of system properties the first thing i'll do though is go ahead here and copy the sys id for this theme because we'll need to reference that to replace the or to specify the default theme for our instance so I will come over here to my system properties. Again, we will search for all the Polaris system properties here. So uh, a couple of things we need to do. The first one is to overwrite the current theme, the current default theme which was my rock on theme. So I'm going to replace it with the theme collection that I just created and update that. And waiting. And there we go. And then the second and final thing we need to do is this first property that we see at the top, uh, Polaris dark themes enabled. 
this is currently set to false. We need to set that to true. That will basically give users the opportunity to change themes. So let me do that. So by default, there is a dark theme available for Polaris. And so if you enable this property as well, uh, you will be able to use that Polaris dark theme. Um, I don't think it's case sensitive, but we'll be uh, uh, safe here. <laughs> Let's make it all lowercase. Okay, so now we are good to go. So I don't think I need to log out if I just refresh this page. We see now that it has reverted back to the default Polaris theme because we selected that as the core theme in our theme collection. And again, it just takes a little while for everything to kind of kick in once you've changed the theme. But now it's there. It's all looking as it normally does in another box, new instance of San Diego. And let's go now to our system preferences, or our user preferences rather here. And now we can see we've got this theme tile. So let's select that. And now we can see we've got our variants here. We've got the default Polaris theme. We've got our rock on theme. We've got Dunescapes, Ocean, and also the Rock On Dark theme. So I can select each one. You can see a little bit in the background, it's a little bit faded, uh, that the themes are actually changing in the background there. So I'm actually really curious to see what the dark theme looks like. And close that. Did that update? I'm not sure. Let me just refresh. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I'm not sure it's the most attractive uh, theme uh, I've seen before, um, but it does work. So I think with dark themes in particular, you have to be careful that they actually do look half decent so your users uh, won't be annoyed. So if you look at the dark theme for Polaris, uh, that's quite neutral, I would say. And um, yeah, but this one here is looking... Too dark for me <laughs> so i might just come back here to my preferences and maybe switch to dunescapes which is another theme i've created previously let me close that and just refresh the page again that's just a more neutral blue blue and white theme nothing uh, too radical here but that's it Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you go ahead and create your own theme collection. Uh, the important thing is, is that uh, the default theme is specified as the core theme, and then all your other themes are specified as variants. But remember, they will be two separate records in your styles uh, table that we looked at earlier. Uh, one uh, associated to a core theme and the other one associated to a variant theme. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.